What compromises was he worried about? There's a pressure from the distributors. They have to pick up the film. At one time, they were all in a queue in front of a good producer's office. But later on, they became more important because they used to finance films. So they became part financiers. And they gave him the right uh, feedback on films that, uh, you see, such and such was the failure, and you got to make it up, and why don't you put up an extra song? All I'd give us a background music, background song that goes on. Can't Dilip Kumar sing a song? Can't he dance here? Or can't he do some sword fencing or fighting? And these are the uh, these are the demands that came to him, not through all the distributors, because some were quite reconciled to what Bimalda made. And uh, it would be discussed on this story conference because he had a, the habit of inviting uh, the unit members. Nobindu Babu was there, Ashit was there, and then Moni was there, uh, Rishikesh was there and they would all sit around and discuss uh, the need for a, a song, how it is to be s introduced with the least, least bit of intrusion. Then, uh, and the need for action, if any. That film Madhumati was uh, the result of these uh, various combinations and considerations, an element of thrill in it, and uh, with the uh, a good lot of music pushed into it and music that's not all just melancholic but uh, there is a bright strain but even to Bimalda's bright strains there was a sense of melancholy uh, the music was uh, in Madhumati was a big success he made the film slightly away from himself. And so he, had, he grappled a lot with whatever he had to do. Mm, it is one instance where he almost improvised the screenplay as the whole uh, shooting went on. The initial uh, line was uh, thin and brief. I think it was taken by one of Ritik Ghatak's short stories. And a short story does not give you sufficient material for uh, uh, full-length feature film. So I think he had uh, to go through a lot of um, uh, conflict in his approach towards various scenes. Then he pushed in certain scene for Johnny Walker. If you see the film, there is a scene for him. The story can do without the scene. But then that was an element of introducing a person who is humorous and uh, to provide uh, a little relief to the people. I mean, that's what they call relief to the people. That was the idiom. Certain uh, lighter moment. Uh, I don't recollect the film now very vividly, but uh, this is what we generally went through. The song Suhana Safar, like the way you move in that song, yeah. the way your hands move. Now, how much of that is him? How much is it you? Suhana suffers. The song came from an idea from uh, uh, our music director, and uh, there wasn't much instructions or much uh, design on my part. We just acted. Sometimes you have to come down and incline, so you make it so comfortable that you balance yourself. Sometimes you got to perch yourself on a stone. The song was shot partly in. Uh, mm, uh, near Nainital and those Kumau Hills and partly here in uh, near Wilson Dam at Igatpuri, beyond Igatpuri. So there are bits and pieces of it. Mostly his approach was uh, visualizing the whole song in terms of pictorial images and uh, I don't think that uh, beyond that any one of us labor that songs as such as they do today. They're doing a fascinating job of these songs. I myself uh, marvel at what they add into a song, they can put into a song. By itself, it's a from a technical point of view, it's an achievement. 
But uh, good picture makers used to take song as a handicap, as some kind of a liability that has to be gone through. And we, the artists, some of us at least, we feel, well, this is some kind of an exercise that we have to go through. We've got to endure it. So, although there were songs in the picture, but uh, there was not undue emphasis on how to render it. I mean, that whole song seems to be hand movements. Was it natural? Or? Yes, it was natural. As, because if you just walk down, it may become a little uninteresting. So, a little movement of hand here and there. I mean, do you play to the lyrics, like if they say to the, Yes, to the rhythm, to the words, to the... Uh, to the general melody. And uh, that's how s songs were done during those days. Not much of instruction lay there, therein, either with, the, either with Mr. Mehboob or even with the other directors that I worked with, uh, unless you had some, as movements entered into this song, then it became a nightmare for us to practice those steps and to do them. Mm. As a rationalist, what did you think of the theme of Who's reincarnation? You see, I don't judge it as a rationalist. You have a proposition for a film, and you feel that, yes, we have an environment uh, and, a, and a backdrop uh, and a national temper where such a thing can go. So that's how it goes. And we've heard so many stories of reincarnation. So it was a very interesting proposition. Only I also felt that there was a positive of physical plot in it, which uh, Bimal Dad tried to create. And, uh, um, he was fending for himself. There were no more conferences as such because they became a little more confusing. He seemed to have a fascination for nature. Yes. Inner. Yeah. That's the simple, there is a little simple child in him. He would sit in a quiet place and watch birds. And uh, he was, of course, very fond of photography. There was a, a bit of that uh, simple uh, rural fascination for the rural scene for him. And uh, that's, a part of, that's a part of his personality, I think. He was not an urban man in, the, in that sense of the word. He didn't have a urban temper either. No, he liked these things. He was very happy when he was on the location on an agreeable location in the outdoors. He was at his best. So do you think you could have done more films with him? Why weren't you there after Madhu Mati? We were designing a film, as I told you this. It was to be a big film. And uh, I think Nobindu Babu did, did some work. There was another gentleman who came and uh, wrote a novel on that subject and got it printed. He said that he would get into the feel of it by writing. And then I heard that he wrote a novel. Uh, Bimalda had some work in hand. I also had some work in hand. So we were planning. It was, uh, you know, the gestation takes a long time. Then we have, everybody has their own commitments. So this talk went on for about a an year and a year and a half. Mm of making this film. And uh, he was fascinated because it was away from his personality. And then it had a, a real bite in it. There was um, substance to that story of uh, a Pathan coming from a free place, having killed the uh, son of the chieftain on point of honor. He's mystified that how a handful of the British are able to conquer such a great, wonderful country with so much of beauty and uh, uh, learning. And he joins this struggle, he becomes a part of it. It was that story and I think it's the change of scene and the challenge of the subject that uh, uh, drew Bhimalda to this. Mm. You felt he died before his time. Was he a broken man towards the end because of his work? No. No, he was never a broken man. He was a man who had firm belief, 
The only thing is that his health gave away. His health gave away. We felt sorry that we, I mean, we didn't suspect that uh, these little coughs or whatever it was would take him you know, away from us. But uh, everybody has moments of elation and despair in this film. And the results of films are becoming far more consequential these days than they used to before because an institution could afford to make one or two uh, films of indifferent who that perform indifferently at the box office but in a uh, one man setup one can ill afford uh, a failure or two so it has its uh, natural repercussions but people come back and bimal was uh, a committed man he was a man of conviction and that is why he not only kept himself afloat, abreast of everybody else. He was more secluded. He didn't. Uh, he he would when go into a shell in the with too many people around him. But inside that man, he had a, there was metal in that man, and he had ideas and he knew the direction in which he wanted to go. Last question. Did he ever become like a father figure at any point of time? No. Maybe some people must have taken him as a father figure. But to us, he was a qualitative man, qualitative uh, disposition, nice company. And uh, you see, across the fence, we don't quite look at ourselves or at each other from the that point of view um, he had nursed uh, rishi and rishi was one of the dynamic uh, factors in uh, bimala's uh, discussions so was moni and ashit and nobindu babu was very close to him as far as writing was concerned uh, he might have been a father figure to some of these youngsters who came up later on but he didn't have the tendency to throw his weight around or anything of that sort whatsoever. He was a fine man in many respects with many fascinating facets to his personality. Didn't he ask you to do Sujata or Bandini where you could have fitted in perfectly? No, Bandini I don't think I could have Suja fitted in. Ashok Kumar. Uh, I don't know. He didn't? I didn't. No. Anything you'd like to add? No, I told you that, as I said, that it was a wonderful experience, very rewarding, and we think of it with the, with the sense of melancholy, all those associations. Because during those days, your associations with the filmmaker uh, who was striving to do, all of us trying to do better work, there was a great camaraderie and a great deal of affection which somehow or the other is missing from the scene. Maybe it exists between the youngsters today also. But uh, I miss him. I'll continue to miss him. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.